is your Tesla battery as healthy as you think it is? Well, Tesla does offer a test within the service mode that allows you to test the battery condition. I've ran that for two years uh, in a row. And again, one year later, it's Christmas Eve. I'm going to be running it again uh, for the third time. And I ended up getting a rating of 93% uh, last year and the previous year because the mileage really didn't change. But it has changed uh, significantly this last year. I've done a lot of supercharging. I went on a couple major road trips. One was for the solar eclipse down in Texas. I supercharged daily, multiple times a day at only superchargers mostly. So for those 23 days, it was pure supercharging. I normally charge to 80%, but if it was required to go higher, um, I would if the application was suggesting that I needed that for the additional range. Anyway, let's go ahead. We'll get into this test and then we'll have a recap on it. There are some conditions that you need to take care of before you do that. You're going to want to have the battery nice and warm, so take it out for a good drive. Uh, I've actually gone and preconditioned it to a supercharger, so it's nice and toasty right now. And then you're going to want to turn off any uh, applications that could run or interfere with this test as it runs uh, for anywhere between 12 and 24 hours. I'm going to be starting this test with 25%. So let's go ahead, let's get into the service mode and run this test again. And I'll put a card at the top here of uh, the last couple of year tests and we'll compare those results at the end with the result. So be sure to stick around right to the end when we'll have a final recap of everything. So let's go ahead, let's take a look at the application here. We'll start, so you'll cl click on the car and go to software. You can see currently I have 75,983 kilometers on the car and I'm at 25%. And the rated range for that 25% is 129. Um, currently I'm looking at this. Here's uh, the app from Ingenix. It tells you stuff about the battery. So you can see right there, so you can see right here that the original battery energy was 82.1, or that includes the uh, reserve below zero as well. But the nominal full is 71.7 currently. Last year it was 75.4, so I have dropped. So I've dropped just shy of four kilowatt hours. And the resistance last time I remember it was 4,500 ohms. This one's 4360. I don't know what that really means, but if you do, um, leave a comment down below and uh, let's have a small discussion on that. So here's all those stats right there. So again, to start this, we'll go to the car, we'll go to software, and then you're just going to solid press on the model until it flashes, and then you're going to put in the very secret code that nobody knows. So be sure to just get it from me, but it's service, S-E-R-D-I-C-E, -E, and click OK. This is going to tell you that uh, this is for service people, so go ahead and click Enter. So it's going to load the application. Again, mine's a 2022 uh, Model 3 long range on the Intel processor. So let's go to high voltage. And you used to just go into high voltage system. And down here, you would start the test. It's no longer there. So if you come to this screen and you're wondering where the test is, you need to click on the battery again and go to HV battery. And here you can see start state of health test. So we'll go ahead and click on that. <clears throat> so they're going to give you some warning here. It's going to start a state of health test. Pumps, fans, and drive units may start making noises and produce uh, or reject. It basically makes a lot of noise and puts out a lot of heat. So that's uh, what it's going to do for a while. Now, again, we go back here. I'm at 24, so it's 24 to 25%. 
it has to be below 50%. So this routine either starts a new battery state of health test or returns to the details results of the last result. And so here are the important notes. Important notes before starting a new state of health test, ensure the vehicle is plugged into a level two charger. Okay, so now that's done. So let's go back. Uh, so here we are it needs to have the vehicle plugged into a level two uh, charger so i just did that ensure that summon sentry mode cabin overheat automatic preconditioning are disabled the test may take up to 24 hours so do not interact with the vehicle or the test may abort. So this is where the stumbling point of most people is they'll come out to their car, it's not making any noises, wasn't making any noises, but the test hadn't completed and it kind of messed everything up. So be sure to just wait this thing out. It will take a long time. I think last time it took just over 10 hours to do the whole test, but I started at a sub 10%, so it's gonna take a little bit longer. So let's go ahead and make sure that none of these items are turned on. So we'll go to security or safety. Sentry mode is turned off. Uh, cabin overheat protection is turned off. I'll go back in here. So let's ensure summon. I don't have summon because I don't have FSD right now. Uh, sentry mode, I check that, overheat protection, automatic, I don't do conditioning. So everything is set right now. I'm perfectly ready to start this test. So we'll go ahead and click on run. Okay, so this is where we're going to unlock the configuration. You'll press on the brake, turn the signal to the right, hold that for the Timer to end, there we go. You can cancel the signal. And all we need to do now is start the state of health test. So once again, we're at 25%. We're gonna run this test for the third time. I'm just shy of 50,000 miles, 80,000 kilometers. Here we go. So immediately the car has woken up, got the fans going, it's going to make a ton of noise. So now for the next 10 to 12 hours, my car is going to be draining the battery down to zero-ish. So last time I think it took it down to 5 or 8%. I thought it would take it down lower, but it really didn't. And then once it does that, it's going to sit for a while to... Uh, level out the battery, and then it's gonna start the charge. And so that's why you need that charger set on there. And we are going to make sure, oh, the battery is set to 100%, so that's good. So now there's nothing we need to do other than let it run for 10 to 12 hours, maybe a little bit longer. And then uh, it will charge it back up to 100% and give us the result on that screen. Anyway, I'll catch you tomorrow when this is complete. Okay, so it's Christmas Day now. The test has completed. My battery has drained itself down to about 1%. And now it's charged back up to 100%. It is just after 5 a.m. on Christmas morning. So let's go ahead. Let's take a look at the results of the battery health test done in the service mode on the Tesla app. So as you can see right here, um, up here, we're up to 100%. Let's take a look at what the estimated range is. So 523 kilometers, uh, exactly what I expected it to say. So it's charged to 100%. So this is the screen that it was sitting on when I got into my car. And what we're going to go is to high voltage battery. And we would normally come into HV system here. And it would tell us down here in the old system, it would be like right here. 
it would say what the percentage is. You can see it's not doing that anymore. So what you have to do is go back into the high voltage uh, battery. And you can see right here, it says start test. There's nowhere anywhere that tells you what the state of uh, battery health results are. So what you have to do is start the test. And you can, this is the same screen we saw before, but instead of starting a new, we're gonna go ahead and get the results. And then we go ahead and run. And here's the new screen. So it tells you that the test completed zero days ago. So it completed this morning at some point in time. And there's my result, 87.8. So basically 88%. Uh, as I mentioned before, the previous past two years, it was 93%. So not bad, 88%. Okay, so as I mentioned, here's on this screen here, it says 87.8% here. But if you close this and then click on the battery, it actually says 86%. So I'm not sure which number is correct. It seems kind of weird that they would have two different numbers because one's 87.8 or 88% and this is 86. So I'll go by this number here, which is 86%. There's my results, 87.8 or 88% with 523 uh, kilometers of estimated range. So I'm pretty happy with that. Um, I think I originally, like I had stated before, it started with 572. We're now down to 523, so just shy of 50 kilometers or 30 miles after three years. 50,000 miles, 80,000 kilometers. We're just hitting the uh, basic warranty will expire very shortly like i say at 80,000 or 50,000 miles your the basic warranty is uh expired so am i did i find this unexpected no <clears throat> like i mentioned before um this year early in april we did a 23 day trip supercharging multiple times per day uh i think i did a about 110 charges um, at superchargers. Uh, there were a couple level two charges, but the majority of my charging was done by uh, supercharging during that period. I do do quite a bit of supercharging now uh, compared to what I had done in the past. So what have I done over the past three years to maintain only a loss of 30 miles? So for the first year, um, I charged my car to 90%, um, like I had done with my previous car, I had no issues with it. Uh, at that point in time, that is when uh, they, the recommendation was to always be charging and to charge to 90%, so that's what I had done. Of course, I did charge to 100% several times, it's not a big deal. Uh, in the second year, I decided to try and keep that charge below 80%. And if I was not daily driving it, or if my daily drive was only going to use 10 or 15, maybe 20% max, I would draw, only charge to about 60%. That way I had to keep the range from 40 to 60, which was about 20% of my battery. Did that for a while. Um, I'm not as strict on plugging it in. Uh, when I bring it home, I just park it. <clears throat> so in the past year, like I mentioned, I did that long trip. So we did a lot of supercharging. And then uh, a majority of my charging, I charged to 80%. Or if you have a uh, long range or performance model 3 or Y, those batteries should not be charged to 100% uh, on a daily basis. 
So I would try and maintain that range up to 80%. Uh, if you do need the additional range, so don't feel that you can't use it. So go ahead and charge your car uh, higher, but try and keep it under the 80%. Uh, always be charging or do the ABC method. So when you come home, just plug it in, set your uh, top charge level to 80% and then just don't worry about it. Drive your car, come home, plug it in and then just go along with your life here. And again, if you're going on a road trip, just go ahead and charge to 100% if you need to. It's not going to hurt it. It is if you plug it in, leave it there for an extended period of time, uh, it will uh, have an impact on your car. So has the degradation of 12% impacted me in any way during the ownership of this car? And the answer to that is absolutely no. Uh, I drive this car daily. I have no issues with it. I charge it to 80% or 90% if I'm needing additional range. I can drive as much as I need for that day and then just come home and plug it in so it is not impacting me in any way uh, for my daily driving so on road trips i normally charge to 80 percent and then uh, run it down to about 20 percent and then that's that cycle of 60 percent um, i can go above that if i need to and i can go below that it does not impact me in any way i can definitely drive a couple hours and then stop and then charge for about 15 to 20 minutes and then just repeat that along the day it's not an issue so this 12 percent degradation is not impacting me in any way at all let's take a look at the ingenix uh, results here so i like to show this screen every time i do this test so you can see there that the original battery was 82.1. I'm now sitting with nominal full of 71.5. Uh, last year that was or 75.4. So a loss of about 3 kilowatt hours. The resistance is at 4470. Last year it was at 4500. And my rated range is 523. And I can't remember what the rated range. I think it was 5. 43 or something like that for last year so those are the results of my test this year it's 2024 on my 2022 tesla model 3 long range with about 50 000, 12 percent degradation there's absolutely no impact on the driving of this car or charging everything seems to be just the same but again if I own this car next year, which I'm hoping to have a new Juniper performance next year that I'll be running this test. But if I do have this car, once again, we will run this test. So again, thanks for watching and we'll catch you on the other side.